Greetings all and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at a comparison that I found interesting and just had to do a video on. The Anne Burnick RG556 which was released recently and the Ain Odin which is roughly two years old. I'm sure that many well-versed retro gamers will be able to make a choice just based off the title because they know the retro scene so well. But with the hype on the Ain Odin 2 and the recently announced Ain Odin 2 Mini, the idea intrigued me. Surely, if the Ain Odin 2 is such an amazing handheld, its older brother that it was based on should still be able to provide some value even if it's already two years old and has an aging Snapdragon chip. My interest was piqued even more when I found out that the Odin Pro is available for $199, which is roughly the same price as the RG556. So, is the OG Odin Pro a viable contender to the RG556? Watch on to find out. Just a short disclaimer before we get started. This review is based off research and of the experience some of the top hands-on reviewers on YouTube had. I would love to have been able to have these two units in front of a camera to do a side-by-side -side comparison for you, but with the channel being so small, it's just not an option financially at this stage. That being said, I love researching and comparing devices, which is a big reason why I make these videos. I guess it's probably because having grown up with a love for all things tech and retro, I kind of feel like I get to participate a bit in this whole awesome retro movement, even though I can't afford these devices yet. So this is like a well-researched opinion, which I hope you find some value from. If you do, please remember to like and subscribe for some more awesome tech updates to come. So, on to the comparison then. First up, the specs. The Anbenic RG556 is powered by a 4 nanometer Unisoc 2820 8-core processor that has a Mali G57 GPU. It features a 5.5-inch 1080p AMOLED display and it comes with 8GB of RAM and 128GB of internal storage. This is expandable via a microSD card. The RG556 runs on Android 13 and has a 5500mAh battery which reviewers note get roughly between 4 to 6 hours of gameplay depending on what you play. On the other hand, the Anodin Pro has a more dated 10 nanometer Snapdragon 845 octa-core CPU and an Adreno 630 GPU. It also has 8GB of RAM and 128GB of storage on the base model. It has a 256GB version if you're willing to pay a little bit more. The Odin features a 6-inch 1080p IPS display and runs on Android 10. It has an edge on the 556 in that it has a 6600mAh battery that lasts between 5-8 to eight hours depending on what you play. So, specs wise, these two units are quite similar. The Odin's processor is roughly 8 years old, but from what I can tell it trades blows with the 556 according to the hands-on reviews I've seen. When I google synthetic benchmarks, it seems to support this, so you should be able to get roughly the same performance out of these units in terms of what games you can play. I cannot 100% confirm that, but as stated, all available information seems to indicate that that would be the case. If you disagree, let me know in the comments, as I would love to hear from someone who has had hands-on experience with both these units. In my opinion though, the RG556 has the Odin beat with that beautiful AMOLED display that will produce much richer output. The Odin has a larger battery, but you can remedy that on the 556 with an external battery pack for only a little extra. When it comes to software though, the 556 has a newer version of Android which will stay current for longer. As it stands, AIN has indicated that the Odin will not be getting Android 11 or 12, and emulation front ends like Emulation Station already only supports Android 11. This basically means that if you snap up the Odin, you will be left using older versions of apps that you may have to get from third parties and sideload on the Odin. Unfortunately, this will only get worse as time progresses, and newer and newer versions of the Android OS and all the apps on it becomes available. So this is a bit of a deal breaker for me, especially at a $200 price tag. Considering all the before mentioned, it doesn't look pretty good for the Odin in this comparison, as it already has taken quite a lot of hits from the 556. But let's look at design and ergonomics before we decide. The 556 takes a modern approach to its design. It features a sleek, glossy finish that may be more of a downside if you don't like fingerprint smudges on your handouts. The controls are well positioned though, with a comfortable d-pad, face buttons and analog sticks. However, the analog sticks have been criticized for their small size and limited range of motion, so just keep that in mind. In contrast, the N Odin Pro boasts a premium ergonomic design that immediately impresses on first view. The controls are clicky and responsive, with analog triggers and rear buttons adding to the overall gaming experience. The larger analog sticks and button placement have received praise from users as well. In this area, it seems to me that the Odin has the 556 beat, as its overall design and look is more premium. 
Its matte exterior, which is pleasing to the touch, should hide most fingerprint smudges too. I will also say that from what I have seen, the Odin comes in more premium packaging than the 556. This may not be a swaying point for some, but you can't tell me that the packaging on the Odin does not look really good. So, point Odin for design and ergonomics in my humble view. When it comes to emulation performance, the 556 delivers impressive results, allowing users to play most games up to PlayStation Portable. It also handles a significant portion of GameCube and PlayStation 2 titles, with the right tweaks and settings though. Unfortunately, it does struggle with many DS games reportedly, and reviewers recommend that you don't buy it if these are the main games that you want to play. The Odin Pro similarly can run most GameCube, Wii, and many PlayStation 2 titles, but 3DS games will also be hit and miss according to the hands-on reviews. This effectively ties the units in the area of performance, but another aspect that tips the scales in favor of the 556 is that the Odin only comes with stock Android firmware on the unit when booting up. You will have to download and install the emulation apps for the retro games you want to play, and set up any front-end software you may want to use to organize these, along with the game files. More conveniently, the 556 basically offers a startup and go experience out of the box with Anbernix built-in front-end software and the option to purchase a SD card with games preloaded. This makes the 556 more user-friendly for those who do not want the hassle of downloading and configuring all the right software before they can get played. Point 556, in my opinion. So what is my verdict then when comparing these two units? At first glance, the AIN Odin may be tempting at roughly the same price point. It looks amazing and the initial look at performance comparisons makes you think that it may be a better buy than the 556. The fact that its older brother, the Onan 2, is so well praised supports this idea. Its slightly larger battery and the promise of possible longer gameplay also has to be considered. But from where I stand, its age and lack of software support is a significant factor working against it. The 556 has newer, more recent software that is compatible with more of the retro emulators and front ends that you would use the unit for. It is slightly cheaper, and that beautiful AMOLED display wins out over the larger IPS display of the Odin in my opinion. So, the RG556 is the champion in this comparison according to my subjective opinion. Let me know in the comments if you disagree though, I would love to discuss it with you. The Odin 2 is a completely different story though, but it is quite a bit more expensive. If you're interested in having a look, you can click on the link on screen now for my overview video on it. That's it for this one though. Have a nice day, and I will catch you in the next tech update.